In a previous video, I discussed how to detect floating input using several different methods depending on how you need to detect it. So instead of just detecting low or high, you also detect nothing plugged in. I created a board here designed to work with a microcontroller such as an Arduino Uno that requires a little more complex software but requires only one pin for every signal plus one pin for control. So if you have four signals, that's five pins. It uses this simple circuit. B is the signal input that you want to detect as high, low, or floating. C is the output that you read with the microcontroller. A is the control signal from the microcontroller, and then you have power and ground coming in. When your control signal is high, the NPN is going to be on, so you have a pull-down resistor on the signal. So if the signal is high, it'll be read as high, low will be low, and floating will be low. And then if the control signal is low, the PNP will be on, and there will be a pull-up resistor on the signal. So a high will be high, a low will be low, and a floating will be high. So you read a pin by setting the control signal to high or low, and then the other one, basically just alternating. And you could hook up a square wave, but this way it's under the control of the software, which I'll show you later. So you set it to high or low, you read it, you set it to the opposite, then you read it again. If both are low, the signal's low. If both are high, the signal's high. And if they're different, then one was a pull-up and one was a pull-down on floating, so it's floating. And that's the whole circuit. I've chosen very high values for these resistors on my board, just so that I'm not drawing any appreciable power. I'm not really worried about noise immunity or anything like that. I just want to make sure I'm not really drawing current from the signal source. So this board supports 10 signals. So for example, you would plug in each of the 10 signals on one of these posts and then connect to the microcontroller pins on the other. These are just shorted together so it doesn't matter. This pin here is the control, which is jumpered to both sides because I've got the PNPs and the NPNs. And the control signal goes on the bases. So here the control signal comes in. It's bridged across and then bust all the way down. These are the base resistors. So it's connected to all the base resistors. Then it's jumpered across where it comes back in and is bussed over to the other base resistors. The base resistors connect to the bases. We have positive and negative connected directly because that's the only place they're used. Positive is only connected to the PNP. Negative is only connected to the NPN. So I've just got the power bussed across there and there. You can see the base resistors are offset a little bit to make it easier to hook up the board and make the board not take up so much space. So here the base resistors are connected to the bases, and then the collector resistors, which are the pull-up and pull-down ones, are connected across, and then you've got the resistor, the pin, the pin, and the resistor all connected in the middle, so it's all shorted together. Now if you run this board and measure it with your multimeter, mine has a 1 mega ohm impedance, and I've got like 100k and 330k, whatever it is, 100,000 ohm resistors on here. So that actually makes the voltage drop because it's a voltage divider with the multimeter. But don't get fooled because when you connect these to a microcontroller, the impedance on those is giga ohms or more. So it's still going to be dwarfed by the input impedance and it's not going to voltage divide into a microcontroller. It's just an issue with the multimeter. And then the final thing, I used two proto boards together. So I just took a, a big stiff piece of copper wire soldered it onto the board where you've got these pads here. I just soldered the copper wire onto these pads on the other side, obviously, and that holds the two boards together so it's one piece. And there you go. So now I'm going to show you an Arduino demonstration of this in action. So here I have the program running and I've plugged it into the 10 pins. I'll zoom in a little so you can see. So here it's measuring the 10 pins in a sequence and X means floating. I should have used Z, but X is fine. So if I go ahead and take a high voltage and touch one of the pins, you can see that one goes high as it's just continually monitoring. So as I touch different pins, it detects the high and then goes back to floating. And then if I do the same thing with a low signal, I can just touch it to pins and you can see that it's reading low on whatever pin I touch. And that's the whole program because it's just a demonstration. So first I name my pins. I start at pin three to read in the signals and there's 10 of them. So that's pins three through 12. 
and then the control signal will be on pin 19. I'll get to the delay in a moment. So here I store the high and low readings because I have to compare them. So we turn on serial, set the signal out, the control out to output, and then we just read over and over. So the first thing I do is I set the output pin to 1 and I delay. The reason for that is my board is not the most efficient thing, and there's actually a few microseconds of delay as the signal propagates around and is resisted by poor solder bridging. So I've had to add three microseconds, and really, you know, four would be better. I'm going to do four. It's only four microseconds, so eight microseconds total, but... You know, like I said, my board is not wonderful, but 8 microseconds is not going to be too bad. So I changed that to 4 microseconds. So we set the control to high, delay for 4 microseconds, and then I read all 10 pins. Then I set the control to 0, delay another 4 microseconds, and then read all the pins again. Then I simply compare them. If both of a pin's readings were high, then the signal's high. If both of the pin's readings were low, the signal is low. Otherwise, the signal is floating. And then I just clear the line. So print does not start a new line on the serial monitor. Print line ends the line. And that's it. That's just the demonstration. So I hope you found that illuminating. I like to create these little helper boards for myself so I don't have to keep wiring everything up in breadboards every single time. So while I work on yet another helper board, I'll be seeing you.